I need to get into the isolation area. Tell me how you did it. Think he wants to know? Doesn't seem like it. The whole saga kicks off with this guy Breslin, fresh off the boat at Bendwater Prison. Boom, he's already facing off with one of the big shot gangs running the show. The dude gets slammed into solitary confinement, but being the clever cookie he is, he's mentally mapping out every nook and cranny in that isolation chamber. Then, during chow time, he slyly asks the guard for the time, and you can practically see the gears turning as Breslin starts some mysterious countdown. Meanwhile, outside, a car goes kaboom, right as some lady steps out. Total chaos. Guards are bewildered, prisoners are revolting, it's a real circus. When the dust settles, Breslin's vanished from his cell, and the guards panic mode, slamming shut every door in the joint. Turns out, Breslin, in a bold move, tries to bail in a fireman get up. Smooth, right? Well, his buddy swings by, whisks him away, and they end up at a sketchy roadside burger joint. But just when Breslin's about to make a call, whoop, the cops roll in, boxing him back into the slammer. Enter Clark, the buddy in the prison biz, introduces Breslin to the big boss at Bendwater. They're from B and C security, these big shots hired by the feds to amp up prison security nationwide. Breslin, ever the escape artist, spills the beans on his three-step escape plan, know the layout, spy on daily prison life, and get a little help from your friends. Oh, and he spills blood in solitary to loosen the guard's grip. Just as he starts spilling the juiciest details, the manager slams the brakes, wanting to know how Breslin cracked the security code. The guy spills the beans about using a milk carton, calling it some sort of DIY tool with see-through plastic that magically unveiled the four-digit code. After dropping that bomb, he bails with a flare, pulling off a few stunts like the earlier car explosion. The prison head? Well, he's left looking pretty darn impressed with Breslin's vanishing act. Clark spills the beans that Breslin, the Houdini of prisons, has been pulling off disappearing acts for a whopping 14 years. Post his grand escape and a jaunt back to the office, Breslin dives into a powwow with Jessica, a client keen on his knack for stress testing prison security. She dangles a fat paycheck, promising to double Breslin's usual cut, and pitches a risky job, infiltrate a top secret prison with an undisclosed location. Breslin's game, he's ready to roll. Plans kick into gear, and Breslin assumes the guise of Anthony Portos, the supposed hombre from Madrid. Cue the high-tech stuff, Breslin gets a chip implanted to track his every move. But just as he hits the road, wham! Some mystery dude electrocutes him, pulls out the tracking chip like it's no big deal, and tosses him in a car. Suddenly, Breslin finds himself in a prison straight out of his blind spot. Classic Breslin move, he starts scouting the joint. In the interrogation room, he meets Hobbs, the big cheese architect of this international slammer, housing serious criminals from all walks. Breslin, as slick as ever, asks for an exit code, but Hobbs ain't handing out any escape route secrets. Back in his cell during a prison-wide gathering, Breslin witnesses brutal torture. Then, a dude named Emil Rottmeyer slides into the picture, urging Breslin to make friends. Cue the fresh meat mockery, Breslin ain't having it. He throws the first punch, sparking chaos until Emil steps in. Skeptical at first, Breslin warms up when he realizes Emil knows more than he's letting on. Day by day, their bromance blossoms, all while Breslin keeps a keen eye on the prison's layout. Rottmeyer, puzzled by Breslin's constant scrutiny, gets the lowdown that Breslin's eyeing the isolation room. To spring their grand escape plan, they stage a brawl, deliberately catching the guards' attention and landing them both in the dreaded isolation ward. Unlike Breslin's previous isolation digs, this one is a pressure cooker, flooded with spotlights, scorching hot, and no respite for the detainees. Post-release, Rottmeyer quizzes Breslin on his findings. Breslin, cryptic as ever, just needs a piece of metal. If Rottmeyer secures it, freedom beckons. Rottmeyer, game for the challenge, sweet talks his way to Hobbs, only to face a cruel hoax. Silent treatment earns him a brutal water pipe torture, but Hobbs stops short of killing him. Back in the cell, Rottmeyer, hungry for intel, questions Breslin's true calling. The revelation? Breslin's not here to break out, he's on a contract for a slow and silent elimination. Intrigued, Rottmeyer signs up for the escape scheme. Breslin spills that understanding the prison layout is key for their getaway. They set the plan in motion. Rottmeyer, sparking a fight with Muslim prisoner Javed, intentionally landing all three in isolation. Rottmeyer, the showman, keeps the cameras entertained while Breslin, soaked in sweat, 
quietly dismantles the bolts on the shutters. With the last bolt out, Breslin unveils a secret room beneath. Intent on focusing light on rusty pegs to loosen the latch, Breslin discloses the need to revisit the isolation ward. They execute the plan, and after the scuffle, Breslin opens the secret lid to reveal a long ladder descending into the abyss. Running down, anticipation turns to shock, they're on a ship, adrift in the middle of nowhere in the vast ocean. In the midst of it all, Hobbes, annoyed by Rottmeier's incessant chatter, pays him a visit. Simultaneously, Breslin, in a twist of fate, accidentally nudges a leaky pipe, causing a spray of water that lands them back in the spotlight. Guards rush to their defense, and Breslin, fortunately, is back in isolation. When Rottmeier, eager for answers, questions Breslin, the escape artist remains tight-lipped. Back at the home front, Breslin's comrades grow concerned about his well-being. Clark assures them that Breslin is engaged in a tough assignment, commensurate with the hefty paycheck. Clark, in an attempt to separate Breslin and Rottmeier, calls Hobbes, leading to Breslin enduring another round of brutal torture. Undeterred, the dynamic duo continues their routine, analyzing the situation and implementing the final protocol, seeking assistance. Rottmeier, confident in his connections, assures Breslin that help is on the way. Enter Hush, Breslin's associate, who tracks him down to a prison run by former soldiers, operating without a federal license, essentially illegal. Simultaneously, Breslin initiates his plan, seeking medical attention for his injuries and convincing the doctor to reconsider his profession. As the doctor prepares to inject him, Breslin strategically falls, retrieving a crucial piece of paper. Stitching up his wound, he joins Rottmeier to discuss their escape plan, now requiring a pair of glasses to decipher hexadecimal radii for positioning. As they gear up for execution, a vigilant guard catches wind of their plot, reporting it to Hobbes. Hobbes intervenes, declaring that Breslin is off-limits for any collaboration with Rottmeier, his benefactors aiming for Breslin's eternal incarceration. In a last-ditch effort, Breslin offers a negotiation, pledging to capture Victor X. In a high-stakes move, Breslin strikes a deal with Hobbes, offering to spill the beans on Monheim, aka Emil Rottmeier, and his network in exchange for the prison's location and his own release. However, instead of actually teaming up with Hobbes, Breslin orchestrates a secret plan behind his back. He returns to Rottmeier, divulging his supposed collaboration with Hobbes. Initially hesitant, Rottmeier is eventually convinced by Breslin's scheme. Enter Javed, playing a pivotal role by feigning knowledge of Breslin's plans with Rottmeier and feeding this misinformation to Hobbes. Before revealing the faux information, Javed cunningly requests permission to pray in open space. Seizing the opportunity, he uses a semiconductor provided by Breslin to measure star lines. Successfully completing the task, Javed returns the semiconductor to Breslin. After thorough analysis, Breslin deduces their location off the coast of Morocco. Seeking assistance from the doctor, he subtly hints at his plan by having the doctor read a chapter on oaths and promises in a medical book. The doctor, now in cahoots with Breslin, facilitates his visit to the clinic under the guise of further examinations. While discussing their strategy with Rottmeier, Breslin assures him that the doctors are on their side, and it's just a matter of convincing Javed to deceive Hobbes. However, Hobbes catches wind of their plot by observing CCTV footage of Breslin supposedly talking to another inmate in cell C suspecting that Breslin is aiding prisoners in that cell to escape. As tensions escalate, Breslin faces a crucial moment in cell A, needing a lighter to break the atmosphere. Javed takes the stage, challenging a formidable criminal, sparking chaos and fights among other inmates. The guards resort to firing smoke bombs to control the situation, but chaos intensifies. Seizing the moment, Breslin, Rottmeier, and Javed attempt to escape. However, a vigilant guard spots their movements through CCTV, prompting Hobbes to order all guards to pursue them. Gunshots echo, and with no weapons, Breslin and his companions engage in a barehanded struggle against the guards. In a desperate bid for freedom, Breslin and his comrades manage to acquire guns after overpowering some guards. However, their escape is abruptly halted when Javed gets shot, realizing the severity of his wounds. With a heavy heart, Javed orders Rottmeier and the others to leave, taking on the guards single-handedly. Armed with a gun, Javed valiantly challenges the guards but succumbs to a barrage of shots. Breslin and Rottmeier decide to part ways temporarily. Breslin instructs Rottmeier to wait outside with a helicopter ready for their escape. While Rottmeier faces the continued onslaught from Hobbes and the guards, Breslin infiltrates the ship's security control room, cutting off all power. Hobbes relentlessly pursues them, and as Breslin emerges underwater, a helicopter lowers ropes for his ascent. As Breslin races up the stairs, Hobbes continues to fire at him. 
In a dramatic exchange, Rottmeier tosses Breslin a gun from the helicopter, which he uses to shoot a steel tank. With a final declaration of boom, an explosion ensues, trapping Hobbs inside. They successfully escape as the prison boat erupts in flames. After landing, a van driven by Rottmeier arrives, revealing a surprising passenger, Jessica, the CIA agent who had previously served Breslin. Jessica discloses that during this mission, she was Rottmeier's daughter and confidant. She explains the special code Rottmeier as a symbol for maximum security prison, revealing that Breslin was hired to free her father. In a twist of gratitude, Rottmeier thanks Breslin and offers him a ride, but Breslin declines. Back at his office, Breslin receives word that Clark, seeking revenge, had orchestrated the entire scheme to imprison him. Clark, now appointed CEO of the Tomb Project, faces his own fate as he is kidnapped and placed in a remote prison at the movie's conclusion. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.